the procedure, the whole procedure underlying Tetem, now are you? <laughs> the entry of Tetem. Tetem was born in Boyo from the moment when they tried to smuggle the proposal into the political reforms committee to the abracadabra, which went on as public hearing and political retreats. Tetem agenda has always followed that corner corner path of lies, half truths, and all sorts of things. The People's Comrade, Senator Uche Chukumerije. A strong and powerful voice in Nigeria's National Assembly. A persistent and resounding voice on issues bordering on the rapid growth and development of Nigeria. A reverberating voice cascading into the distance and leaving a huge void to be filled. The voice of the Great Comrade, Uche Chukumerije. A consummate journalist, an astute organizer of men, a detribalized Nigerian, a man whose love for the masses was incontrovertible, Senator Uche Chukumerije spent his last years as an outstanding politician and elder statesman. Overtly protective of the peace and unity of his dear country, Nigeria. Most of all, a tenacious and courageous fighter for any cause he believed in. The rejection of third term goes beyond the Basanjo regime. The rejection will remain a silent permanent veto on the messianic illusions of any future president who may be tempted to reduce our constitution to his toilet roll. When Uche was born to Chief Obon Naya Chukumerije and Madame Egejuru Jesse Chukumerije on the 11th of January 1939, little did the people of Isuochi in today's Omunyochi local government area of Abia State know that a colossus who would bestride his times had arrived. It felt kind of different and, and yet, uh, at, you know, right from when he was young, was the, the center of the attraction. The young Chukumerije spent his childhood years in Isuochi, completing his primary education there before moving to Our Lady's High School, Onicha, in 1952 for his secondary education. Even then, Uche was a prodigy who set new academic records by passing his O-level papers in class four and his A-level papers in class five a feat that was unheard of at that time. By 1957, he had gained admission into the University College Ibadan and seemed set for a brilliant career in the academia. But as it turned out, his destiny was too broad to be contained in the ivory tower. Oche himself discovered this when he embraced socialism and began the transformation into the man Nigerians would come to know as Comrade. As a young university graduate influenced by people like Abdul Al Karim Qasim of the mid 60s Iraq, Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt, and Ghana's founding father, Kwame Nkrumah, Chukumerije was left learning ideologically. He was against imperialism, he was anti colonialism, but democracy as a means of attaining and retaining political power was not an idea that he found entirely convincing. Chuku Merije graduated in 1961, a year after independence, and even at that early period in the nation's political history, he was already concerned about the nation's future. At first, he chose a career in the military, but opted out at the last minute, settling for journalism as a way of projecting his socialist and pan-Africanist vision of a strong, productive and gloriously independent nation. The strength of young Chukumerije's views and character was evident in the articles he wrote for the West African pilot even before graduation. When he graduated with a degree in economics in 1961, 
Uche followed his passion for writing and mass communication and became a reporter for the Daily Times. He later left to work for the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation in Lagos. When the civil war broke out, Uche Chukumerije joined the Biafran Broadcasting Corporation where he was quickly elevated to the position of Director of Propaganda in the Biafran Ministry of Information. Uche made an indelible mark by leading a first-class propaganda machinery that successfully projected the name and course of Biafra all around the world. The heroic roles that he played, which uh, actually influenced me to join the Biafran army. At 25, 27, he was director of propaganda, so I just, I'm inspired by the youthfulness and focus of that uh, generation. I beg your pardon, I'm intelligent enough to understand every question you're asking. Okay, can you answer that question now? Was there or is there any hind artificial hindrance or obstacle or impediment against the emergence of any Igbo man of, or any person of the Igbo race as, a, as the president of this country or to enter into any political office of his choice? Yes. Tell us the, the artificial... I can only quote by deduction your own paper here. What page? What exhibit? Page 7. What exhibit? His work with Ohanez in the, in the 90s. I remember very clearly how he used to travel to Inugu virtually every weekend, by road, when they were walking on the... I think then he was the... either the chairman of the strategy, yeah. They're the ones that were putting together the case for the Oputa panel. It was the pivotal role that Uche Chukumerije played in the Biafran struggle that qualified him many years later to make the case for the Igbo people at the Human Rights Violations Investigation Commission. Headed by the late renowned jurist, Justice Chukudifu Oputa. At the Oputa panel, dark memories of the Nigerian Civil War re echoed when Chuku Merije highlighted the sentiments that led to the war and the near extermination of the Igbos, as well as the difficulties they faced even after the conflict when it came to reintegration with Nigeria. As the uh, magazine October 4, 1990 reported, the Obasanjo regime, in his boundary adjustment exercise in 1976, pushed the Indoni Ebema area and parts of Ndoki south of the Imo River, which harbored the highest petroleum deposits in Nigeria, into rivers. I put it to you that the creation of states by the federal government, three days before the declaration of Biafra, was in the interest of all Nigerians, with no exception. Well, the agitation for the creation of the states had I been mean, on for a long time. Indeed. Why at that particular strategic time? Why at that strategic time was Biafra was to help them win the war. A question of marginalization, we are talking about marginalization in the context of the public terrain, in the private sector, sector through your drive, through your hard work, you could have anything you have. Mm -hmm. today, in the, today in the country, uh -huh. today in the country, Today in the country, the Ashamalos, that is the Shobo, Oshobos, dominate textile trade and uh, Ashoka trade, the whole of West Africa, the whole of Nigeria. That was based on their ingenuity and personal drive. Today, the houses dominate cattle rearing trade, hide and ski, suya. It was their own drive and their own. We are talking about help us defend private sector for the public sector. Also, 
As one of the last remaining members of Ojuku's kitchen cabinet in Biafra at the time of the death of Chief Chuku Emeka Odimegu Ojuku, it was Uche Chuku Merije that rose on the floor of the Nigerian Senate to once again put the Biafran struggle in a proper historical and ideological context within the larger journey towards the truly integrated and progressive Nigerian state. But the lift, far beyond the Biafran experience, became a consummate Nigerian patriot who offered his best for the service of the country he loved very much. In 1971, after the Nigerian Civil War, Uche Chuku Merije returned to his first Never one to sit on the sidelines as an armchair critic, Chukume Rije decided to roll up his sleeves and join in the politics of the Second Republic so he could actualize his socialist ideals. He pitched his tent with a group of Marxist intellectuals which made up the People's Redemption Party, PRP, a progressive political party formed by the leader of the Northern Socialist Movement, Malam Aminu Kanu. He believed wholeheartedly in the party's socialist agenda and fought with all he had for the success of the party, rising up to become the party's general secretary before the military coup in 1983 put an end to the Second Republic. With the return to military rule, Chukume Rije returned to private life, focusing his attention on raising his young family of eight children. It is a testimony to his character that all of his children are today successful in their own rights. The camera reminds me a bit of my childhood because um, my father, being a journalist, always had cameras in the house. And he used to 
us, we the children, to play inside or outside the house and he would film us. He would film us when we did um, martial arts or when we swam. Ucha is the best father anybody can wish for. You have no idea the attention he gave his, to, to the, his children and their development. He was always there. I don't think there was one uh, parents' day or church, you know, or function, school function of the children, right from when they were in the nursery school, primary school, that he didn't attend, right up to when they were in the university. A great lover of discipline and sports, and one of the people that helped establish the sport of Taekwondo in Nigeria, Chukumirije saw to it that his children inherited his love for sports. He guided them to become champion swimmers and black belts in Taekwondo. His youngest son, Yagazie, went on to win a bronze medal at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. When I was training at the back, I remember in his last days, he was just sit down and be watching me. Always asking, are you ready? You look slimmer. With a look of disgust on his face, you look fatter. You know, you're not training as hard. My father does not understand the concept of failure. A winner cannot fail to him. You know, it was just unimaginable. He went to watch my brother, you know, Yaga. He just felt fulfilled as a parent. He was so happy. Who would I kneel before? And he lays his hand on my head and prays for me. Always wishing you well. The days leading up to the competition will be in the in the hotel room. So we'll start doing a mini fast, we'll start praying, you know, constantly encouraging um, Yaga and the team. Another of his sons, Dikogo Egwatu Chukumerije, is today a prolific writer and performance poet. These achievements testify to Chukumerije's excellence as a father and a maker of champions. For comrade Uche Chukumerije, public life and controversy beckoned again when he was appointed in 1993 into the transition government of General Ibrahim Babangida when the June 12 elections were annulled. Chukumerije, as the government's Minister of Information, was thrown into the middle of the crisis faced with a massive media onslaught. Chukumerije chose to stand his ground and in response deployed his own formidable mass communication skills towards countering the attempt to bring the government down through widespread civil unrest. In the opinion of many, his actions, controversial to others, may have saved the country from sliding into another civil war. The politics is really developing the people, helping the people. The Talakawas, the poor people, developing the country. And that's what my brother did. I saw him do it. Um, and um, I saw him, uh, um, you know, fight for Ndibo. He was the leader of the Southeast uh, Caucus of the Senate. And uh, but we came very close when we got into the uh, Senate. And uh, within the period we were in the Senate, he has shared a lot of things with me including all his write-ups, sometimes give to give to me to look at before he will issue them. And whenever I asked him that this should wait, he had always respected uh, my view. But interestingly, shortly before he died, he sent me a handwritten note. And it was quite uh, touching, because usually he types things he sent to me, but this one it was handwritten, and I'm going to keep it as long as I live. Without doubt, Uche Chukumerije was a veritable leader of men, one that will be sorely missed, particularly in difficult times. Not one to dodge responsibility. He never shied away for speaking up for Ndigo. Even at the risk of being branded a tribalist, he consistently fought for the rights of Ndigo 
and of every other Nigerian social group to equity and justice in a free, peaceful and united Nigeria. It is easy to recall his courageous defense of the Apo Six, a group of innocent young men unlawfully killed by the police in 2005. He also fought for the release of Ralph Uwazurike and other Masop members when they were incarcerated in 2007, and again stood behind the then Chief of Army Staff, General Azubuike Ihejirika, in 2014 against unfair calls for his prosecution for army operations in the Northeast. As a three-time senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Uche Chukumerije was a resonant and commanding voice on the side of the average Nigerian for all of his 12 years in the Senate. He was one of the very few who commanded total silence with his erudition, intelligence, forthrightness and total dedication to duty on the floor of the Senate. Does the executive know that one of the world wars was caused by only an act of one man? That is one strike of a matches that eventually led to a conflagration that engulfed the whole world. I ask that question because ours is a constitutional democracy. And the three structural hinges of social democracy are the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. And incidentally, of these three arms, it's the legislature that defines the democracy. remember the high mortality of bills in this house, we will remember the high mortality of motions in this house, we will remember the acts of neglect we have passed through in the hands of the executive. Then we come to that conclusion that what, uh, my, what this man is doing is nothing but the thin end of a bigger wage. A soldier was beaten unconscious. He was taken to the hospital. And they couldn't find out what his blood group was. They took his blood, he couldn't eat both, he couldn't do anything. And they were asking the doctors, what happened? What blood did we inject into this man? And one person said, look, all of them had a very rare blood group. But if you go to any soldier, you see the blood M, all their blood is M military. So that's it. I don't, yes, so I mean, I think you can. Uh, am, am I right, sir? <laughs> <laughs> now, my guru is out. This passion for education is unparalleled. So, I think that Uche has left a real legacy. This has lived a very fulfilled life, and we can only thank God for him and for his family. And I'm glad um, he came to the Senate because he has left a good footprint on the floor of the Senate. Solidarity forever. So As a senator and chairman of the Committee on Education, Chuku Mirije will be remembered for his active role in the mediation of disputes between government and university lecturers, as well as teachers of polytechnics and colleges of education. We have to put one and advise the government to please uh, <coughs> be careful about wholesale responses to surface similarities. The two organs seem to be doing the same job and all that. Based on that, who say response? All of you go, all of you this, all of you that. Because that could, in the short run, seem to solve a problem, but in the long run, it creates more problems. Because hidden specialities, 
which these organizations are addressing. He certainly will not be forgotten for his pivotal role in the harmonization of UTME and JAM examinations and the initiation of the Corporate Social Responsibility Bill, a bill which sought to regulate corporations and ensure that they contribute to the economic, social and environmental development of host communities as well as promote respect for human rights and local capacity through close corporations with communities. I called him a democratic soldier. Um, Comrade was a true patriot, quintessential political tactician, and an activist of great repute, who along with other patriotic Nigerians saved our democracy. Those in support of the motion that the bill be now ready a second time say aye. Contrary. But most of all, Chukumeri J's unflinching courage and determination in the fight against the third term agenda of the Obasanjo regime will be etched indelibly in the minds of Nigerians and in her history books. Unafraid of executive victimization, Uche Chukumeri J risked everything, including his seat in the Senate, to sound the alarm and ensure the failure of the third term project. When the um, effects of the lung cancer had progressed, he was lying on his bed in his room. I went to him. He told me to sit down. I was about to travel that night. He told me to sit down. I sat down. He said he wants to pray for me. You know, and then after the prayer, his lungs were damaged. He was breathing, but he wasn't getting enough oxygen. And when I got up to go, I was so afraid that this would be the last time I would see him alive. And I started crying. And then he just turned and said, look at you, man. He said, you have faith, I have crying. Is he gone? His body is gone. But the philosophy lives on. He was left in his kids. We'll meet again. To the end, Chuku Merije was a fearless fighter for any cause he believed in. The passing of the great comrade on the 19th of April 2015 has left a vacuum that will be difficult to fill. But like a comet that comes once in a lifetime, Chukumerije lit up the skies and left behind indelible footprints in the sands of time. Adieu, the people's comrade, Senator Uche Chukumerije.